Namo Buddhaya. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourse 65. Uh, title of the discourse is with Bhadali, Bhadali Sutta. Uh, basically, this is a discourse of, about Bhadali making an offence, which he then confesses to the Buddha and how Buddha treats that particular offence. So, Buddha said that mendicants, I eat my food in one sitting a day, one sitting per day. Doing so, I am healthy and well, nimble and strong and living comfortably. You should also eat the footing, eat your food in one sitting. So, when he, when Buddha said that, Venerable Bhadali, who said to the Buddha, sorry, sorry sir, I will not be able to do that. I am not going to eat my food. I will feel remorse and regret. That means he felt that it will be difficult for him to practice this kind of a rule. So, Buddha said that Bhadali, at least eat one part of the meal in the place where you are invited and bring the rest back to eat. That will also be fine. So, Bhadali said, sorry sir, that also I will not be able to do. And uh, so that way, what? Uh, so then as the rule was being laid down by the Buddha, so okay, and then after that what happened? So earlier how Buddha run, ran the Sangha was that he just said some something and the mendicants used to follow it. The mendicants were diligent. Later on, as more and more and more mendicants used to get added, there were few elements who did not follow Buddha's teachings and also they laid down a rule, a monastic code, which was known as Vinaya. So this particular thing was laid down in the Vinaya of eating one, one, not as a rule, it was encouraged to eat once, eating once a day and not eating at the night time and all those rules were added. So Badali said that he would not, he announced that he will not try to follow it. So for three months, uh, I think that was the time when Buddha was uh, spending time in the rains retreat at one place. So he did not present himself in presence of the Buddha. And why that happens is that if you don't follow uh, any rule laid by the teacher, you generally don't, you know, as a mark of respect, you don't meet the teacher. So he met, didn't meet the teacher, Buddha, for three months. And then at that time, the mendicants said that, Badali, enough, you have done enough. Uh, three months you have not met the Buddha, please learn your lesson and don't make it hard for yourself. So he said yes, he, re he realized his mistake and he went up to the Buddha and said that I have made a mistake, I was foolish, stupid and unskillful to not follow the rule and I please accept my mistake, I would uh, not make it again in the future. And then see Buddha's nature was that he, uh, he accepted the, uh, the, the mistake, uh, apology and everything and but he at least made the other person realize that the the, the the particular mistake was made. He just didn't just, you know, say, okay, you know, no problem. He just wanted the other person to realize the mistake for his own welfare. So Buddha said that, that you should realize that at this time, when in the rains retreat, several ascetics, several monks, nuns, laymen, laymen, lay, lay people, ascetics, brahmin, they all are practicing, the mendicants are there, everything comes to know that you are doing, you know, this kind of a mischief, you are not following the instructions. So he said, yes sir, I am sorry, I understand. So then Buddha gave another analogy of a mendic, uh, you know, bridge uh, in crossing over the mud. Uh, so that was another analogy that was given. But then Buddha said, oh, since you have recognized your mistake, uh, I accept it for it is in the growth in the training of the noble one to recognize a mistake for what it is, deal with, de deal with it properly and commit to restrain in the future. Then Buddha gave the example of a mendicant who thinks that why don't that I don't follow the teaching. Mendicant who doesn't fulfill the training and then they just uh, they just meditate and live withdrawn and everything uh, and wanting hopeful to get knowledge and wisdom but they don't, right? So that is, and then compared to that, there is a mendicant who fulfills the training as accordance with the teacher's instructions and they meditate and do the practice and meditative practice and they achieve the knowledge and wisdom. So important thing what Buddha was trying to bring here is that the rules that have been laid are for your own welfare, so follow them. And if you don't follow the rules, you will not attain the path. So the rules are important. So that was there, that was mentioned. Okay. Then Badali asked that, uh, what is the cause, sir? Why is the reason why they punish some monks repeatedly pressurizing and what is the cause they don't similarly punish another monk repeatedly pressurizing him? That means why some monks are treated 
uh, are scolded more and some monk monks are scolded less. So then Buddha is giving certain like analogies that, not analogies, but Buddha is saying that a, a, a monk who basically when he does an offense, he doesn't get past it. He, he, he basically what he does, he dodges the issue, distracts the discussion with irrelevant points, displays annoyance, hate, bitterness. For them, the venerables, the senior venerables who are uh, dealing with the disciplinary issue, they don't quickly settle it because they want to examine it deeply and then ha uh, recommend an appropriate punishment. As compared to that, a particular monk who 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 doesn't dodge the issue, doesn't distract the dis discussion, and who says that I will do as as it pleases to the sangha, for them the monks try to resolve the issue in a quick way. This is how it is done, right? So if something is very tough, a, a tough person, then you have to take your time to you know settle the issue. But if someone is agreeing that okay, I have made this issue, I have made this uh, a fault, so then for them the matter is quickly settled. So then there is this uh, thing about some monks that Buddha says that they they get by with mere faith and love. So if they get by mere faith and love, then they senior monks say. Let, let us not punish him very much because then whatever little faith is there in he has in the Sangha that will also get lost right? so that was coming out then then uh, Badali asked what is the cause sir what is the reason why there used to be a few training rules but more enlightened uh, mendicants earlier and what is the cause why these days there are more training rules with few enlightened mendicants so this, so this represents actually the change in the Buddha Sangha that happened over time so earlier Buddha had a few diligent monks who were practicing with the knowledge of the Buddha and over time lot of lot of people joined. Some people also joined just because of the reputation that the Sangha brings. And some people just join because they have nothing else to do, they just join the Sangha so that they get free alms food. And those people created problems in the Sangha. So Buddha's life actually was not easy. Even after his enlightenment, he had to deal with so many problems of the Sangha. Outside of the Sangha, he had to deal. With the Brahmin caste continuously attacking him for his views, right? And then within his Sangha also he faced the problem of internal politics and all these uh, rowdy uh, uh, people within the Sangha. So he had to lay down the rules and everything, right? So, so Buddha said, that's how it is, Badali. And this actually, for me personally, this is the, the human side of Buddha that, that attracts me. So it's not like God who you know, just wishes something and it happens and, you know, everyone is at the mercy of that God. No, it was not like that. Buddha was a human who became a, 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 a fully enlightened being with his own efforts. And even after becoming enlightenment, getting enlightenment, he had to face everything. But he faced with calmness. So it's like said, no, that before enlightenment, wood and water. After enlightenment, wood and water. So nothing changes outside. But the way you look at things change, right? Okay, so Buddha says that's how it is, Badali. When sentient beings are in decline and the true teaching is in disappearing, there are more training rules and fewer enlightened mendicants. The teacher doesn't lay down training rules for disciples as long as certain defiling influences have not appeared in the Sangha. But when such defiling influences appear in the Sangha, the teacher lays down the training rules for the disciples to protect against them. Right? So these are the training rules of the Vinaya. Vinaya. If you want to read about Vinaya, then there is this book, Bhikkhu, Bhikkhu's Rules Guide for Lay People. Uh, you can just type it in Google and it is available as a PDF. So you can study that. All the Bhikkhu's rules, you know, many, many rules they have. Definitely we can use some of the rules in our own practice. Even though we are lay people and we are required to observe only five precepts, we can definitely take, take learn and, you know, kind of imbibe some of the other rules from, you know, those, the monks' precepts. Buddha said, and they don't appear until the Sangha has attained a great size and abundance of material support and fame, learning and seniority. But when the Sangha has attained these things, then such defiling influences appear in the Sangha and the teacher. And this is what Buddha says, the practical reality that, you know, and one of the reasons why Buddhism died down in India was that Buddha created this system that the Sangha would, would meet with the laity, lay people and give them the Dhamma knowledge. 
but over time you know these kings and all they they were so impressed by buddha's knowledge they gave a lot of money and land and everything to these sanghas so they did not have any need to go out and teach the dhamma to the lay people because they they did not have a dependence on the arm food arms food on the lay people so they just remained within the sangha they did not preach the dhamma so so then buddhism was virtually eliminated from india and second thing was that within the sangha they were corrupt people corrupt practices sexual misconduct cases that were coming out so people's confidence in the sangha also came down as people learned about these instances so so all these things are practical reality right so okay then buddha taught about uh, said that uh, uh, of only few of you at that time i taught you the exposition on the teaching of the simile of the thoroughbred colt do you remember that batali so batali forgot right so batali forgot batali said no sir so buddha said why have you what is the reason buddha so he said surely sir because long time now i have fulfilled the training according to the teacher's instructions so buddha said that's not the only reason batali while i am teaching this silly man doesn't pay attention apply the mind concentrate whole heartedly or actively listen still badali i shall teach the exposition of teaching so this is the explanation of teaching where buddha says that a horse trainer obtains a fine thoroughbred horse and he trains them so so when he trains them it, he makes a lot of twists and turns he was not he doesn't wear the colt and everything and you know he feels discomfort but over time in his training he becomes a very fine horse similar way buddha tells that a mendicant with 10 qualities is worth of the offering dedicated to the gods worthy of hospitality worthy of religious donation worthy of veneration with joint palms and is the supreme field of merit for the world what ten it's when a mendicant has an adapt right view right thought right speech right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness right immersion right knowledge and right freedom a mendicant with these ten qualities is worthy of offerings dedicated to the god basically someone who is adept who has deeply followed the path and who has freed him through knowledge wisdom completely freed himself that mendicant is worthy of offerings dedicated to the gods okay so this is bhadari sutta this is more of an interaction between in the uh, teacher and student on the offense that he had made and uh, right so i hope it was it had some insights for you do read the discourse at your end and share your insights in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya